Hey everyone, thanks for coming by. So today we're going to be talking about creating a uh, update handler in the application that I've been creating. So stick around and we'll get right on that. All right, so in, in previous episodes, you know we've been working on a Zend Expressive application, been building it a piece at a time, and including some other pieces that aren't necessarily specific to Zend Expressive, but are specific to web-based applications, or more, more specifically, we're creating a REST API in PHP. So uh, many of the things that I've been doing are specific to REST APIs in PHP. Now today is no exception. Today we're going to be uh, I'm going to be creating a uh, creating an update handler. We've we've already created a create handler where we where we create new records. Uh, we had already done a a pagination and set up a read handler, so that way we could see all of the, all the records and we could paginate through them. Um, and then in the previous episode, we also created a, a, a UUID. Um, using a UUID middleware so that way we could, uh, use, or not necessarily middleware, but we were linking to it through Doctor and ORM. So that way any records that we created um, or were uh, you know, updating or whatever, we're going to carry a UUID instead of an auto increment uh, ID, an integer. And so this time we're going to continue in that same vein where we're going to uh, use that UUID to then uh, also call and create a, a, an update handler. All right, so let's get going. Now first, I wanna bring to your attention here uh, in, in PHP Storm, I've got some scratches down here in the, in the bottom left-hand side. I've got, uh, uh, I've got a get and a post and a put scratch. And now these are the new method in PHP Storm for being able to call web services. And uh, you'll notice in the put, which is what we're going to be working a lot with today, we're, we're issuing a put request. Uh, we're telling it the content type, application JSON. We're passing a JSON string, um, which is then going to be used to do an update uh, you know, through the put request. So we're going to be using this scratch uh, throughout the example here. Um, uh, now, I've already, I've already got the Docker container up and working, uh, up and running. And so the next thing I want to do is then um, using, using the command line tooling that comes with Zend Expressive, we're going to uh, create uh, new handlers. Okay, so we've done that in the past where we created new handlers, uh, where we created our, um, where we created the create handler. Oop, I don't want to do that. Uh, we created the create handler, and today I'm going to do that much the same thing, but I'm going to create an update handler. So uh, if we do composer uh, expressive list, which is the, the command that was created or added to composer through the composer JSON, and it knows how then to call the, the, the Zend expressive tooling and gives us availability to a lot of different actions. One of those actions is the handler create uh, action. So we're gonna go ahead and use that. So if I uh, type in composer expressive, and we're gonna, uh, we want to address the handlers and we want to create. Now that create is saying create a handler. It's not saying create a create handler. It is, uh, it is using the create method of the handler uh, CLI tooling. So then we're, what we're gonna do now is put in the namespace announcements and we want to put it in the handler namespace and we want to call it announcements Oops. update handler and that's what we're going to create so now if i hit enter it creates those uh the, a couple different things it, it registers a factory and it creates the factory and it also creates the handler now up here if I click in the upper pane, we'll see that there are in fact two new files created. There's a handler factory and there's also the, the update handler. Now also when you use the command line tooling, another thing that the Zen, the expressive command line tooling does is it creates um, the, 
it, it, it puts the factory into the config. And if we go into the config auto load and open up the Zen Expressive tooling factories, we'll see that it did in fact register the factory here. Now, as you, if you watch my previous videos, you know, uh, even though the tooling adds that here, I actually like to keep those in the module that I'm working with, right? So if I'm creating a module, I want everything according to that module to be put in the module versus put in a, in a global space. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and remove that out of here, um, uh, leaving, leaving that array empty. And then if I come down here to my config provider for the announcements module, I can just uh, paste this in here. And uh, I don't need to do that because it's already there. Or do I? Hold on. Update handler. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that for now. But um, one of the things I can do is I, I can pull off the beginning here because, of course, I'm in the module, so I don't need to tell it, I mean, uh, to call the announcements module. And so there. Now I've added, <clears throat> I've added the factory in here so whenever whenever i call announcement update handler it's going to know to call the factory and so that is that is there and i don't need these these were automatically located by php storm and that was what it was just prompting me for but i don't really need those because i'm within the module all right so i've added those into the config provi provider and i've removed it from the zend expressive tooling factories because again, uh, the reason I do that is because I like keeping things specific to the module within the module. So if I remove the module, I don't have to worry about uh, remembering to go and clean out anything in the, in the config for the overall application. You're, you, you may decide to do it in a different way. Maybe you want to keep things in the Zend Expressive tooling uh, uh, file, and that's perfectly fine to do that. I just don't do that. And I'm not saying that one way is right, one way is wrong. It's just the way that I decided to do it. So uh, the next thing that I want to do then is uh, let's take a look at the factory that was created by the Zend Expressive tooling. And we're going to be working with that for just a moment. Uh, make this pane a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. So that way we can see the file. All right. So uh, now in the factory here, there are, uh, there are a couple of changes that I want to make. First thing is that... Um, the first thing is that I need to change my return, right? Uh, right now I'm, I'm uh, returning from the factory uh, an announcements update handler, uh, and then it's calling just blindly to the announcements update handler. Now I'm not passing anything into it. So out of the box, this factory is not really doing anything other than calling the handler. So it's not really serving a purpose. However, we want it to serve a purpose. And what we, what we really want it to do is this, and that is, I want it to, first off, from the container, I want to get, uh, I want to get the entity manager and the class. Uh, so that went the entity manager class. And I also want to, as I'm calling the update handler, I also want to send it the how response factory. If you remember in a previous video, uh, we we used we created the how we had the how created it in an automatic automatic way so that way um, so that way it was it was uh, going to create the how for us instead of us having to worry about creating all that so I'm going to create the, the how response factory I'm going to pass that in there and the third thing that I want to send is. I want to send the resource, or uh, yeah, resource generator, the resource generator. All right, so now we're we're sending it the the Zend Expressive How Response Factory and the resource generator as well as the Entity Manager, and we're passing those into the update handler. Now at this point, uh, what am I missing here? I'm missing something. Oh. It didn't finish up the class. There we go. All right. So at, at this point, our factory is completed. This is really all that I want the factory to do for now, is just uh, pass those items into the update handler. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the update handler. And the update handler, of course, is also very empty. It's, uh, it's just, uh, it's just uh, a, a class for right now. Um, 
we want to go in and, uh, and, and add some things into this class. To start with, we're going to, uh, to start with, we need to take advantage of the three arguments that we're passing into the update handler from the factory. Uh, so, so let's go ahead and do that. And to do that, um, we're going to build some fields. So let's call protected entity manager. And we also want to call in protected uh, how response factory. Oops. And we also want to do the third field, which is going to be our resource generator. Now remember the how response factory and the resource generator are being used for the automatic how creation. So we're going to be putting those in there. And now that we've got that, now that we've got those in there, we also need to create a constructor to populate these because, of course, we're calling into the into the handler. So now we need the handler to populate those. So, oops. so we're going to call uh, public function construct, and in the constructor, first off, we have our arguments that are being passed in. We're going to do the entity manager, which is from Dr. and ORM. And that is what's going to populate our entity manager variable. Uh, and then next we're going to do the how response factory. And the third thing is, of course, the resource generator. All right, so now we've got our three arguments uh, being passed in there where we've type hinted them so that way they know, uh, th that way the constructor knows what an energy, ma energy manager, how response factory and our resource generator should look like because we've type hinted those. Now PHP Storm has been nice enough to add those items for us up here as I was typing them and, ex and accepting the autocomplete that PHP Storm was presenting me it created these use statements or the import statements to bring those in. So now that we've got those in there, uh, what I need to do is use those values then to populate the, the various uh, fields that we created earlier. Oh. All right, so we've got the entity manager and then we want to also populate the how response. Oh. How response factory. And of course, lastly, we want to do the resource generator. Okay. So now there's our constructor. Our constructor is intact. We're populating the three fields that are being passed in, uh, being injected in, so that we're, we're, we're all ready to go. Um, now that we've got those items in there, though, we need to start flushing out or fleshing out rather the the handle itself, the handle method of our update handler. And so let's go ahead and get a start on that. So the first thing I want to do is I want to be now keep in mind, this is going to be answering a put request. So as a, a, through a put request, we're going to be expecting a response body, right? Because if something is, uh, is updating a record, obviously the information has to be in the response body that we can then use to update that record. So one of the first things we want to do then is, is uh, we'll create a variable for response body. Okay, so we're gonna create the response body and what we're going to do is use, uh, pull from the request, we're going to say get parse body and we're expecting the request and announcements. Now our, our, uh, the, what we're expecting to get in the body of course is going to be an array of items uh, named request and announcement. Now I'm using that in my example. If I, if I didn't want to use these two items to make a multi-dimensional array, of course uh, you don't have to. 
I'm doing it in my example only for clarity, so that way we can look at this and know exactly what it is. Um, generally speaking, I might not I might not put the request, I might not put announcements as uh, you know the the first items in a multi-dimensional array. Uh, now, also then the next thing I'm doing is I'm doing a check to see if the request body is empty. Obviously, if the request body is empty, this handler has nothing to do. It doesn't need to do an update. Uh, so we want to make sure that there is a request body. And how we do that is we just check if it's empty. If it is empty, then we set an array, uh, which then we're going to be outputting as JSON, and we're going to pass the uh, return type as 400. So we're using we're using regular HTTP responses here. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna pass a 400 because of course the request is missing. There is no request body that has been sent. Um, now in future videos, I'm gonna come back and make this a little bit more automated as far as uh, doing these these results. So it'll it'll better uh, it'll better relay uh, the re the uh, the errors. Uh, but uh, for the for the sake of these beginning videos, I'm actually being very verbose in what I'm doing. So I'm creating these uh, these errors and outputting them. So that way, when somebody if somebody were to get a 400 uh, response, HTTP uh, 400 response, then they're also going to be getting this body, which says if they look into it, they will see that it is missing the request. And and no re no request body sent. I like being I like including that in the body, even though I am doing the proper return type, um, so that they could fail without worrying about what the content is. I like putting the content there, uh, just for for completeness sake, if nothing else. Okay, so now we've got the body, which is which contains our entire request. And the next thing I want to do is I want to use, I want to, to create an entity repository. And we create that, ent that entity repository. Oh. Let's see. We create that ent entity repository by calling the entity manager and we're gonna get repository and then we tell it, pull the announcements class, right? We want it to pull the announcements class um, and, and then and build that for us. So, um, I noticed that it's not, not automatically pulling that in. So I do need to, I'm going to bring in the, the import statement. So I'm going to scroll up here to the top and I'm going to add in the import statement for that repository. So announcements, entity, announcement, and that is, that is my repository. So now if I come down here, uh, the announcement class is going to be addressed correctly. Okay, so now we pulled that in as our entity repository. Um, and then of course, once we've got our repository, then we can go ahead and find the record that we're going to be updating, right? So that's the next thing we want to do is we want to find the record. So, so we're gonna pull the entity, use the entity repository, the find method, and we're gonna use from uh, the get attribute um, of ID. So we're going to use the ID uh, in, in order to query that and get the information or the, the object so that way we can use it. Of course, once we do that, we then want to make sure that we got what we expected, right? So we want to see, is the entity empty? You know, maybe the request was placed and there's no such record in the database, right? We want to make sure that the record actually exists. So this, in this case, we're going to say, if the entity is empty, throw an error. It's not found, there's no record there. So we're gonna pass a 404, we're gonna give the JSON response, and of course I'm including a body because I like including the body for, for uh, completeness so that folks can capture that if they wanted to. All right, so now we've got the entity and we can work within it. So what I'm gonna do then is, is I'm gonna create a, a try catch that is then going to First off, it's going to set the announcement. Now you may remember in the previous video, I created a method in my entity called set announcement. And basically it, it, has, it calls all the setters and getters to create a complete announcement object. And then I'm gonna pass the request body to that. Now let's take a quick look at that just for, for uh, the completeness of it and so if I go into my entity, go into my announcement, I can scroll down to, 
I went too far. Yeah, set announcement. So I have the set announcement method. Basically, I'm setting the sort, I'm setting the content, I'm setting the modified date. And, uh, and in, in the case of a new record, we're gonna set is active to one. Otherwise, we're going to expect it, uh, that, that to be passed. So it'll determine whether we want to make it active or, or not. Um, and that's the set announcement method. So we're gonna use that here. So first off, we're, we're setting the announcement. And then after we get done with all those setters, so we can build the thing, then we're calling the entity manager, we're telling it to merge, uh, and then we're telling the entity manager to flush, which is actually going to commit, right? It's going to commit the changes. We're using the ORM exception um, if there's any problem doing the update to the record. And then, of course, we're going to output the error in the case of it actually erroring out. Now, um, I, do need to, I do need to include some items here, um, some more import statements. I need to... Of course, pull in my exception. So that way it knows how to handle the doctrine exceptions. And I also need to, so that I can do a good JSON return, I need to include my JSON response like so, so it can be called. Uh, and that should do it. So for my import statements. Let me just double check here. Yeah, everything looks good. <clears throat> all right. So now I've got all my all my things able to be called. Uh, now the last thing that I want to do is now that I've got the record, the record's been updated. The last thing we want to do is we actually want to then uh, create the the return, right? We want to create the return so that this update handler actually returns something. And and we in this case we want to make sure we're returning we're returning. Uh, how a how response so we're going to do that much like we did in the last video where we create a resource and that is done by using the resource generator that we passed into this constructor for in the beginning we're going to use the object or we're doing it from object where we're using the entity that we requested earlier uh, and built and then we're also passing the request and then we're going to create the, the how response factory and we're going to create the response using that resource and the request. Um, so now our how should be created along with this record and, and be passed out. So now that all that's done, that is what the handler looks like. The handler looks like that. So we're going to get the body, make sure it's good. Then we're going to uh, build the repository. And using the repository, we're going to then uh, create a new announcement uh, or populate all the items. Then we're going to do the merge and flush, which is doctrine. Um, and then once that's done, we're going to create the how response or the 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 um, the response with the how incorporated in it. So now let's go ahead. Uh, now that I've got that done, I'm going to use the database panel here just a second because I want to query and see all the records that are here. And we can see now my, my first record, we can see the, the, the idea of that. Um, now, all of these, because I created them around the same time, the ending is, is all the same, right? However, the first seven characters or, of, of the UUID is what uh, makes, these, makes, makes each of these unique. And we can see that I've got the UUID here. So I'm going to then go into and open that, the, the scratch that I was using. And we see that the first seven characters match record the first record in this result set. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm passing in the, in the JSON, I'm, I'm passing that ID. I also have that ID in my URL string that I'm passing, and it's the, the put as the method. I'm changing the sort to 15, and I'm also changing the content of this announcement. And uh, the announcement is going to change. And we can see that right now the sort is 10, and the content is uh, announcement number one. So I'm going to go ahead and execute this. And we see that it did come back with the response code in the bottom pane. We can see that it did come back with the response code 200, so it liked that request. And we can also see in the contents, it returned 
uh, and told us that for that ID, we have a sort of 15, we have the content being returned, is active, and of course are, are created in modified date objects. And if I come uh, in the top pane then and refresh the database, we can see that it did actually change the content as well for that first record. So our update handler is functioning. It's built uh, doing exactly what we expect it to do. And, uh, and all is good, all is good. So now we have some other things yet to do in our API, but that's it for this video. This video is just for doing the update handler. Um, if you liked the video, please leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. If you uh, have any, any uh, videos that you would like to request, if you would like me to do something else on Beachcast, please let me know. Also, please subscribe down below, so that way you're uh, notified for any upcoming videos. Uh, I thank you for coming. Have a good day.